Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that it is May. We made it through April. I don't know about you guys, but I am, I'm hopeful about the month of May. I don't know what the month of May is going to bring. Most likely for me, that will mean warmer weather, which I'm excited about, but I'm also hoping for a little bit of normalcy. Just a little bit. It may not happen, but I'm gonna hold on to the hope. But today's video is all about my April favorites. I have some really great stuff in here to share with you guys. Some of this stuff is newer to me. Some of it I discovered at the end of March and I wanted to throw it into my March favorites video, but because it was new, I saved it until now. So we're gonna talk about it today. But I have a good mix in here for you guys. I hope that you guys are excited about this one. Those of you that are new to my channel, special welcome to you. I hope that if you haven't yet subscribed that you will consider doing that before you leave. And let's just jump right into it. So I wanna start off with the one that is the most obvious favorite for me, and you probably can even guess what it is. It is the Sydney Grace Enduring Love Palette. If you happen to see my first impressions video on this palette and also the seven looks video that I did on this palette a couple of weeks ago, I will link both of those videos right here for you guys and down below. This palette is incredible. It is such an amazing palette. There's just something about the mix of colors and combinations in here that really works. I don't want to beat it at horse. I have talked enough about this palette in those two videos that I mentioned, but guys, the formula of these shadows is so amazing. I had so many comments from you guys saying that the Sydney Grace formula of eyeshadows is bar none the best you have ever tried and I have to say I think I'm kind of on board with that. I've only had this for a month and this is the only thing I've tried from them so I don't want to definitively say that yet but I am seriously impressed with these eyeshadows and I am so excited to pick up some more from this brand. I have heard that they do a sale in the month of July so I'm going to try and hold off until July before I place another order. Hopefully order some singles and give those a try. Of course I will let you guys know when that happens and hopefully you'll be seeing some of those from me but if you have tried out their individual shadows and you have some suggestions for colors, please leave those down below because I would love to get some suggestions on which ones are your favorite. I've had a couple come in so far, but I'm asking for more. I wanna get a really nice cart going, so when that sell hits, I'm ready to run. But I am just in love with this palette. I am wearing it on my eyes today. I have the color John on my inner corner. I have this kind of shimmery bronze green right here, which is the color Deanna on my outer part of the lid. And then I have kind of a mix of the brown and this sort of black right here, just right against the lash line and underneath the lash line. And oh my goodness, this is just such a high performance eyeshadow palette. Let's move on to a whole lot of blushes. I have a lot of blushes to talk about this month. First off, the Persona blushes. These are amazing. They are the perfect shades in my opinion. If you're someone that likes to have a warm option and a cooler neutral option, I feel like these are the perfect blushes for that. They did such a good job with the colors of these. This is the color Carmel, which is much more of a kind of dusty neutral pink, whereas this one is a little bit more of a warm peachy pink, the color Georgia. Love them both. No matter what eye look I'm creating, I know that one of these blushes will go with that look. They are very nice and sleek, but still very sturdy feeling. I'm a huge fan of these. I've been reaching for them almost every day, other than the days when I've been reaching for my next favorite, which are these blushes right here. These are the Essence The Blush blushes. I picked these up online at Ulta. I did briefly mention them in a recent video and you guys, I have been loving these. I believe these are the only three shades. It's possible they had four shades on the Ulta website, but I picked up these three shades and I love them all. This one is the one I'm wearing today kind of on top of my bronzer that we'll be talking about next. And then I actually have Georgia on the very inner part of my cheekbones right here. This is the color Bespoke. It's kind of a warm reddish bronze. It almost looks like a bronzer shade, but it has just a little bit more warmth to it than a traditional bronze. So I actually have some bronzers swatched right here that we'll be talking about in a minute. And I hope you can see that this one is just, has the tiniest hair of like a red base to it that makes it such a pretty bronze topper or blush. Love the formula of these. This one does have the tiniest bit of a sheen to it. I also love these two colors right here. This is the color Blooming, which is a very, very light, dusty, light pink. Love this one on its own for just a touch of color, or I love combining this one with other blushes that are maybe a little bit too strong or pigmented that I wanna scale back a little bit. And this one might be my favorite of the bunch. This is the color Befitting, a very nice, neutral rosy blush that I feel like goes with just about anything. Goes well with a warm tone eye or a cool tone eye. I love combining these two together. And I think like during the fall, this is gonna be one of my favorite fall and winter shades because it's such a nice rosy color, which I love on my cheeks in the fall. At $2.99, I just think these are incredible. I absolutely 
love them. I am, next thing I am so excited to talk about is the Ofra and Samantha March collaboration. Now I ended up picking up the bronzer and the lip duo. I already have her highlighter, so I went with these ones because I have been, I've been trying out so many blushes lately. I knew I wanted to wait on her blush, although I'm still very interested in trying it out because I have heard such great things. But I have to say, these are incredible, you guys. I love this bronzer. It's a very warm bronzer. So if you are someone that has very fair skin and doesn't like bronzers that pull a little bit warm, or if because you're more fair, bronzers tend to pull a little bit more warm and orange on you, this might be a little bit too warm for you. I love it though, especially as my skin starts to get a little bit more tan, which I'm, I'm hoping is going to happen at some point, but it still works for me. I'm wearing it on my cheeks today. It does give you that very warm, sun-kissed kind of look, but I wanted to show you guys some swatches of this bronzer next to a couple of other bronzers, just so you can see how the color compares. I know bronzer swatches don't always show up the best. I'm hoping that you guys will be able to see these, but this first swatch I have right here is the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade 01. This is one of my cooler tone bronzers in my collection. Next to that, I have the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in the shade Light Bronze. That's the one right here in the middle. And then this last one is the Ofra Samantha March River Bronzer. You can see it's a little bit deeper, a tiny bit warmer, and a little bit more pigmented. I would say this bronzer, if you have lighter skin, you probably want to be a little bit more careful with, but it is absolutely beautiful. And the formula is so pretty. It has the most beautiful, subtle sheen. I I'm such a fan of it. But what I am most surprised by is how much I really have fallen in love with this lip duo. I am not a liquid lipstick person. I don't wear them very often. And I want to start off by saying this. I haven't worn this a ton throughout the last month because I haven't gone anywhere. I mean, if I'm wearing a liquid lipstick, it's usually when I am like going out and going to be out for a while. That doesn't happen very often, even in my normal life, pre-pandemic. So I don't have a lot of places to wear liquid lipstick lately, but... I do really love this liquid lipstick. I've worn it on camera a few times and I love the tone of this and I'm not usually a fan of mid-tone nudes. I like my nudes to be a little bit more on that, on the lighter side of the spectrum, but this one looks beautiful, especially when you combine this with something a little bit lighter in the center, either a lighter color lipstick or even a lighter gloss, such as this one. And this gloss takes the cake for me. This is like my dream lip gloss. It's a very sheer, very glittery but in the most refined glitter kind of way oh my goodness it is absolutely beautiful it is truly like crushed pearls it is the prettiest gloss on top of absolutely anything my only complaint with Ofra's lip gloss is I do love their formula but I wish they weren't so small because I just feel like I'm gonna run through this thing so quickly so this is kind of my save for special occasions kind of glosses when I really want to look bedazzled and beautiful. This is the gloss I will reach for. I absolutely love it. Samantha, you did such a good job on this collection. I'm even more excited to pick up the blush now because I just feel like it was so well curated. Next favorite I have to share with you guys is a set of brushes that I was sent from Refer Brushes. I felt so honored when they contacted me asking me if I wanted to try out their brushes because I have heard seriously amazing things about their brushes and I am... A smaller channel so I just was not expecting that but I of course said yes I would love to try them and I have to say you guys these are absolutely amazing now they are higher-end brushes they are quite expensive but I have to say I am really impressed with these I've been using them constantly over the last month and I want to just go through the ones I especially like so this is their entry-level set and these three eye brushes I just think are incredible this one right here is their number one brush, which is kind of their just blending eyeshadow brush. It is nearly identical to my Wayne Goss number 18 brush, which is vastly becoming one of my all-time favorite eye brushes. Super, super soft, just the right size to where it's very versatile. You can use this to do just a whole wash of color over your eye. You can use it to really do detail work inside your crease, but you can also use it because it is very, very soft. You can turn it sideways and actually blend things up through your crease as well. It's one of those multi-purpose brushes that if you only want or can afford one brush, this is the kind of brush that would do everything. But I also really love these little eye brushes. This one right here is the number two brush, which is a really great smudge brush. I love using this to smudge shadow on my lower lash line or to kind of shape up this outer corner right here. I don't know about you guys, but I always struggle with this area of my eyeshadow right here, getting it to not look sloppy, but this brush does a really good job of pulling whatever color I use, whether it be something very light or something a little bit darker on my lower lash line, just kind of, I'll drag it up a little bit and then pull it 
slightly into my crease and it just shapes this outer corner of my eye that I typically struggle with so, so quickly and so easily. It's also very soft, washes up very well. And then this little brush right here is such a nice brush for inner corner work. Now I normally use my finger for my inner corner shadows because I find most brushes just don't give me enough punch with the shimmers that I like to put there. But the trouble with using your finger are either number one, if you have fingernails, that's really not even an option for you. But even if you don't have long fingernails, when you use your finger, it's really hard to be precise. And sometimes you can go a little bit overboard with the inner corner highlight and get it kind of all over when you really maybe just want it right on the inner tear duct. But this brush perfectly gets the inner tear duct area, but it's nice and stiff while still being soft. So you still get the reflectiveness of the shimmer shadows that you use. A lot of smaller, maybe more fluffy brushes like this just don't give me that shimmer punch that I really want. And I'm too lazy to wet my brush. I just, I just am not a brush wetter. I almost never do that. Also really impressed with these two brushes right here. Initially, I wasn't quite sure what to do with these two brushes because they felt, I felt like this one was a little bit too small for blush for me. And it is, I don't like using this for blush, but what I really like using this for is for contour or bronzer that I really want to kind of precisely place somewhere, but I really love this brush for my blush, ironically. Now, I am a huge fan. You guys probably know my Real Techniques blush brush. If you tried this and you felt like it was a little bit too large for you, you might like this one a little bit better. It does still have kind of the rounded top. It's a little bit smaller, and it does a really good job of just precisely placing your blush just right in this area that you would want to put blush and they are so incredibly soft. This one does shed a little bit. That's the only complaint I have about any of these brushes so far. This one has shed a little bit. I've washed it now twice, and I'm finding that as I've been using it since I washed it the last time, it hasn't been shedding as much. So that is definitely something to be aware of, but the performance of this is really, really nice, and their eye brushes, I'm telling you guys, are incredible. I did get in the rest of their brushes, including their bronzer brush, which I am so excited to keep trying, but I've only used it three times so far, so can't mention it yet today, but so far I'm very impressed and I will definitely keep you guys updated. So thank you for sending me those rougher. I know I'm spending forever on these brushes, but I wanted to mention just a couple of things. I Brushes are tricky because I think they can be very expensive. They're one of the few makeup items that can be an investment though. I think often a good quality brush, and again, I can't say that for certain about these because I haven't had them long enough, but in my experience, the few higher end brushes that I have bought in the past generally last significantly longer than the drugstore or affordable products price brushes. However, that said, you should certainly never feel like you can't get a good makeup look without really good brushes. I absolutely think that you can. I think it's more about longevity and what your budget is and what you're willing to invest in. So keep that in mind if you're looking at these brushes. They are a little bit pricier, but I did also want to mention they have a concept store where if you're willing to give feedback on their brushes, they'll give you 50% off. So keep that in mind if you're looking into their brushes, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's insanely expensive, you may be able to get it for half of that price. All right, I do have a nail polish recommendation for you guys. So this is the nail polish that I'm wearing on my nails right now. And I've actually talked about this before many, many months, possibly over a year ago. And it's actually a combination of two things. First off, this very affordable nail polish right here. This is from LA Colors. It's their Color Last nail color. I find these at Walmart and this one specifically is in the color Love. It's kind of the whitish pink color. I actually have two of them right here. I just picked up a new one. I don't know if you guys can tell they're slightly different in color. So this is the original one that I have that's a little bit more of a white pink, whereas this one has a tiny bit more of like a true bubblegum pink in it. I'm talking like the tiniest bit, but I can see a difference on my nails. So I actually got this one home and after I used it once, I put a little bit of white nail polish into it to get it more in line with this color right here. I know, the things that I do to save a buck. It's kind of ridiculous. But these are only two bucks and I love how these wear and last on the nails. The brush inside here is really, really bad. It's not, it's not a great brush. It's kind of fat and jagged at the end. It's very blunt cut at the top. So it's not the easiest brush to get a really good application with. I've actually thought about, again, am I the most frugal person in the world? Perhaps. But I've been thinking about getting one of my kale polish brushes and seeing if I can swap them out because the kale polish brushes are, in my opinion, the best nail polish brushes I have ever tried. The shape and the size of them is absolutely amazing. But the form of these is really nice. You do need about two or three coats of this, but it dries pretty quickly and it lasts really well on my nails, especially with this next thing that I want to mention. And it is a top coat from Olive in June. This top coat is 
amazing. It is a little bit more pricey. I think that you can get this on their website for like $8. I believe their nail polish is around $8. I will link it down below along with the price. It is such a sturdy top coat. So I have two coats of this polish on along with one coat of the top coat. It is Thursday. I have had these nails on since Monday. That is insane for me. I am very, very, very hard on my nails. I never wear gloves when I do dishes. I constantly am scraping stuff off of my countertops. This morning I even cleaned off my stove and the cast iron part that goes on top of the stove with my nails, mind you, and they still look good. I mean, my nails take a beating and the fact that they still look like this is pretty freaking impressive to me. So this combination right here, I am a huge fan of. The last thing I have to mention for you guys is a skincare item. And I have the most crazy and funny and awesome story. I may be over exaggerating this, but as I was getting ready to film this video, I had my little bin of favorite products sitting on my desk right next to me. And as I was putting my makeup on to get ready to film this video, I was watching a YouTube video on my phone from Jessica Braun. It was her monthly favorites video. And she started talking about how much she has been loving rosehip oil or rosehip seed oil for scarring and I about died because I have the exact same thing sitting in my favorites bin for the exact same reason. I felt somehow extremely validated about the fact that me and Jessica Braun were talking about the same favorite product for the same reason in the same month. And also if you didn't know, she happened to give me a little shadow on her channel. I, I don't know, it was, it was like, I felt like we were like connected in some special way. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> I think she had mentioned she had some scars that she was trying to heal and she'd been using rosehip seed oil on them and was amazed at how well it worked. I'm telling you guys, the exact same thing happened to me this month. So I don't know if you guys have watched my video a couple of months back where I was asking you guys for skincare recommendations. I had a lot of great recommendations in that video and one of the ones that was mentioned the most was trying out rosehip seed oil for fading scarring and marks on my face. So I have been trying this on my face pretty regularly for the last couple of months. I haven't noticed a huge difference in my face yet, but my hands and like my arms take such a beating in the kitchen. They get burns on them all the time because I am the most negligent cook in the kitchen. If I am ever pulling something out of the oven, I won't put my hand all the way in the oven mitt glove. I'll like fold it over and try and do it the lazy way and I always end up getting burns. I don't know why I can't learn my lesson, but I had a nasty, let me take my little watch off to show you guys, which you probably won't be able to see. I had a very, very nasty burn. You can kind of see it right here. It was disgustingly nasty. Like it looked really, really bad. And I looked at that burn as I was doing my skincare one night and it, it was just freshly like blister had just, I'm sorry, it's a little too much detail. You know what I mean? That's when I thought, you know, maybe now would be a good time to put some rosehip seed oil on it. I am telling you guys within like three or four days, this healed up so incredibly quickly. It totally blew my mind. And not only that, the scarring is actually pretty minor. I mean, this was a really deep, dark, nasty burn and it's already faded to almost nothing. Now I've actually been using it on some of the scars that I have, the plethora of scars that I have on my hands and other places. They aren't healing quite as quickly and I think the trick is to put it on when the wound is fresh. So if you have an acne mark or a burn or another something that would normally leave a scar, try putting this stuff on earlier than later and I'm telling you guys, it was absolutely amazing to watch. I am still hoping that I might see some fading in some of the marks, the deeper melasma marks that I have on my skin. I know that those are really difficult to fade, but even if that doesn't work, I'm keeping this on hand for my very battered and beat up hands. <laughs> Now that was my last favorite product, but I do have one more favorite for the month, and that is you guys. I know that's super cheesy to say, but I want to thank you guys again for participating in my full month of your suggestions. I have gotten so many great suggestions. I'm feeling this like newfound inspiration to film videos for you guys because of your great ideas. I can't wait to keep doing some of them. So thank you guys again. I truly have the best subscribers in the world. I am completely convinced. But that is it for today. I hope that you guys are all doing well. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys have a wonderful month of May. Sending you all so much love. And one more reminder, if you're not subscribed, I would love for you to do that before you leave. And that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Royals Royce of eyeshadow palettes. Share with you guys is a set of brush, brushes while still being stopped. a good spring thunderstorm and we have not had one yet. Oh, this day just got better. That is crazy and you, I have, no, I put it on Monday. Liar. <laughs> the
feelies right now. Mm. No, that's what they call it, Mandy. Call it the feels, not the feelies. Just stop pretending like you know, Mandy. Just stop pretending like you are in the know with those kinds of words, because you're not.